Well, let's now go to Kigali for a wrap of the World Economic Forum. Our reporter Numpumele Lusiziba joins us live from there. Good afternoon, Nampi. Final day of the WEF. What has been happening today? Thanks very much, Alicia. Yes, well, like you do say, it's a wrap now. Um, just a couple of hours ago, there was a hive of activity here. Uh, your who's who and your hustlers and your bustlers, uh, government uh, players, business players, people from NGOs, they were all huddled here uh, having a bite to eat after the meetings ended at around half past one. Um, but basically what happened throughout the three days of the meeting was that there was discussions about all the various challenges challenges and possible solutions that face the African continent. Areas around energy, the energy deficit, how to deal with that issue, solar power and so on. Um, issues around financing development and how to source money, especially in these times where uh, it's quite difficult or quite expensive to borrow money, uh, given that uh, Africa tends to consist of emerging market economies which are faced with higher borrowing costs and lower revenues due to the fact that commodities prices have been on a downer for some years. So these were some of the challenges that were being discussed. Uh, the people who won innovation prizes, people who have fought out of the box and actually done things in their local communities to help people have access to electricity, uh, technology in general. Uh, ICT was the main theme, the main thrust of this uh, discussion here. Uh, and Rwanda was looked at as a model country uh, for development in that regard because it's been exactly Exemplary, having invested uh, millions of, uh, of dollars in infrastructure, in ICT infrastructure, uh, with parts of the country having access to the internet free. I mean, the whole time that we've been here in Kigali, we haven't been off the internet. We've had access most of the time and have ha had to rarely use our data, which we put on our phones when we first started. So it's been a positive experience in that regard. They're way ahead. Uh, and um, earlier, uh, President Deputy Deputy President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa was speaking, saying that South Africa had a lot to learn from Rwanda but that it could be a two-way uh, flow, that is, Rwanda can also learn from South Africa as well. Uh, he was very, um, he was very, uh, 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 what's the word? He was very uh, praiseworthy of, or praising of uh, uh, Paul Gagami and his, uh, his leadership in the country in terms of revolutionizing the ICT space. Uh, he said that relations between South Africa and Rwanda were positive, and he said that they were set to even deepen further, because the only way that the African continent can progress is through mutual understanding and cooperation and so on. Alicia. No, but look, uh, the deputy president also spoke about the easing of red tape for ease of access to do business. I mean, did he touch on what kind of avenues these are? Yeah, thanks, Alicia. Um, yes, he talked about a one-stop shop because uh, the common complaint by business, both local and international, is that uh, South Africa has a very high regulatory burden, which puts people off investing in the country. So now what he's saying is that there's a process in, in the going at the moment of creating this one-stop shop, which would basically mean that um, if you want to set up a company and run a business or whatever, you go to that office, tell them what your requirements are, what your plans are, and then they would literally, you'd literally go through the whole process. I think the Gauteng government has a similar thing uh, for, for, for businesses in Gauteng where you just go to one office, uh, which is a very efficient way of doing things. Because in uh, Rwanda, you can set up a business in theory, in three hours, it doesn't always happen like that. I spoke to people who said it doesn't always happen like that. But there's a quick way of setting up a business and their regulations are not a burden at all. It's much easier to do business in Rwanda, for example, uh, and the World Bank has said that, whereas in South Africa we're lagging behind in that regard. So they, the... the Deputy President wasn't very specific about when this one-stop shop would be um, established, but they, he says that is in the workings, it's in the process. Um, but one of the challenges that was put to him is that if they do do this one-stop shop, surely it's going to mean that some departments are going to have to just be rid of altogether or collapse together, which could mean maybe some, you know, some people having to lose their jobs or responsibilities. Uh, there are lots of vested interests right now with the current framework in the 
South African government. So he was saying, no, we're going full steam ahead. We're going to streamline the system to make things easier because ultimately we need investment in the country. We need people to set up businesses and to do so in an effective and efficient manner. Alicia. Thank you so much for that beautiful view behind Numbumele Lusiziba. They live to us from Kigali in Rwanda with a wrap of the World Economic Forum.